Hey YouTube, this uh, figured I'd put a video together. I had a discussion come up on a Facebook forum the other day concerning the 357 SIG. I was asking some questions about reloading it. Um, and there's some tricks to it. There's also a couple extra steps. And I figured I'd do a, a video on how to reload the uh, 357 SIG and some ways you can kind of sort of cut some corners and, and make it a whole lot easier. Uh, real quick, this is my loading bench. Uh, it's a neat little thing I picked up from Gavin Tube. It's an old oak top bench that actually came out of a uh, uh, Southern Bell, which is their telephone company that around here. It's old, I'd say 60s, early 70s. It's got a really thick, heavy oak top. Anyway, I ordered some three-quarter T-Track and routed it in. Stopped it early so I can have a little place right here. I don't want to run it all the way to the edge. Uh, I got, I think, some five-foot sticks. And what you do is you, uh, you laminate some three-quarter plywood, basically lay them on top of each other, glue them, clamp them, and then cut them to size. And then you uh, cut your little grooves on the side here to match your T-track. And you can take these out, move them around. And the reason I did this and the reason you ought to maybe consider it is because this allows you to take your loading bench and use it for multiple things. Single stage press, progressive press, you can put some of like your powder drop tools, your um, case trimmer, whatever you want, shotgun press, and you can take all of your presses off of the bench and store them in a closet and uh, you don't have to have such a large area dedicated to, to loading. Uh, you can kind of compress it down and uh, make your bench more modular. But uh, I will apologize. I am, do not have a tripod. Wish I did. And if this sucks, I'll go buy one and start the video over. All right. So uh, this is about the 357 Sig, and this is uh, this is the older method of uh, putting it together and uh, resizing and and, and um, resizing your brass. Uh, the, the 357 SIGs, most of you know, it's like a little rifle bullet. It's essentially, it's a 10 millimeter, and it's been necked down to a 9 millimeter. And it's also, was the cases were shortened from the 10. A lot of people say it's a 40. It is not. I'll prove that to you shortly. Um, this is a 10 millimeter that's been shortened. Case has been trimmed, and then it was necked down to 9 millimeter. Um, now, the problem with this is, is that if you size these things, uh, you have to treat them like a rifle bullet. You're supposed to, uh, you know, lubricate the, uh, the bodies of them. Um, this is the 357 SIG uh, Sizer die from RCBS. Uh, I have the uh, Hornaday lock and load, so this, I have these little quick lock collars, so I don't have to readjust every time. Uh, it's got your expander ball, and it's, it's not a carbide. Now, at the time when I started this, uh, they didn't have carbide um, sizers. I understand they do now, but they're pretty expensive. So when using this one, you have to lubricate all your cases, size them, and clean all the lube off, of course. Uh, now, that's not bad if you're reloading, you know, 20, 30, or, uh, you know, 243s or 30 L6s. The, the brass is big. You can get a hold of it. It's pretty easy to clean it off. But when if you go to the range and pop off three, 400 rounds, and you come in here and try to clean all the lube off these little teeny tiny cases, you end up with like some major carpal tunnel. I mean, it's just, it's pretty rough on you, on your hands, cramp, you know. So what I do... Um, and I have tried the Hornady spray lube. You still got to wipe that mess off. It, it's not as bad as the, the roller pads, you know, like, but there's a way around it. You don't have to lube them at all. This is a Lee 40 slash 10 millimeter die set. They're cheap. Lee's pretty cheap, not expensive. Like I said, it says 40 Smith & Wesson or 10 millimeter. And what you're looking for, and the only thing you really want out of it, is this right here, the carbide sizing die. You can just order just that carbide sizing die, but most places it's about as cheap to just go grab it off the shelf or order the whole kit off eBay. You do get all four of these pieces, but all you really want is that carbide sizing die. This is the carbide sizing die. And if you'll notice right there in the very end, you'll see a, like a little ring inside of a ring. That's the carbide insert. Now, the carbide insert means you do not have to lubricate your cases. And that's what makes this, that's, that's what you want. 
So in a nutshell, here's how we're gonna here's how you're gonna do this. Um, you take your expander ball out. You don't want that because that's based on for a 40. Uh, you're gonna take this and always read your setup instructions. The way you're gonna do this, and I am going to raise this camera. Bear with me just a second. I need to buy a tripod. I'm not a professional YouTuber, guys. And I don't really care about subscriptions and likes. I just like to use it to, for my own pleasure, I guess you could say. Alright, so, there we go. So the way you set up an RC, uh, the, uh, the Lee Sizer is, um, I want you to, after you put your shell holder in, which is for Hornet Day, it's a number six. Um... You want to screw it in until it touches. That's technically it. I don't have a locker in I don't need it because I'm just going to do one case right now. So I'm going to pick up one of these brass that I uh, just picked up from the range the other day. Uh, this is a Winchester brass. Now, the according to Hornaday, of course, uh, or Sammy, the uh, this should be 865 in length. And I am setting at 854. Uh, so I am definitely good there. And your case trim length is 860, which I'm obviously good there as well. I'm about five thousandths under. Alright, so the thing is is the, the, the case wall, the base of the uh, brass itself, in my case it measures right now hmm, about 430. Uh, it should be 424. Now, the the 10 millimeter die without the expander in it, all that's going to do is size is the case body, just the walls of the case. If I can't get this thing to focus, come on. It's going to size the case walls. It's not going to do anything about the case mouth or the shoulder. Okay, that's still going to be just as normal as the next. So what we're going to do is we're going to size the, the walls. And that's what the carbide sizer is going to do without the expander ball. And it's going to leave us the shoulder and the case mouth. Now, again, with having a carbide die, I don't have to lube the case. Now, what I've done here is I've just shrunk the case wall down. Focus. Uh, so I don't remember what it said it was, but now I'm down to 418, 419, and the books calls for no more than 424. So I have necked my, I'm sorry, I have a necked, I have sized the body of the brass down using the carbide die. So now all I've got left is the shoulder, sorry, the shoulder and the case mouth is all I have left. So I'm going to remove, now of course I'd do 10, 50, 100, whatever. Uh, I'm going to remove my 40 caliber carbide sizer die without the expander ball. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to grab my 357 SIG non-carbide die. Now, now that I've already squeezed the, the body of the case, now that I've already squeezed the body of the case down, uh, it's going to go in and out of here with no problem. I don't have to lubricate anything because bumping the shoulder and the case mouth doesn't require any lubrication. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in there. And I'm going to slide my case in. No lube. It goes right in. Don't even doesn't even want to stop. All I do is bump my case mouth. And I'm done. Done. Okay. To give you an idea, that's my non-carbide sizer die. I'm going to try to put a 357 SIG in there that's been cleaned but not lubed and it doesn't want to go. You you're risk having a case mouth. I can force it but there's a good chance I might stick it in there and rip the <clears throat> case off. So that's just how nice having that 40 carbide is. So now that I've sized it I'm going to need to double check my measure make sure I'm not over length. So I am sitting at uh, right about 859 and 865 and case trim length is 860 so I'm still inside of my case trim length so this thing is ready to go now 
I'm not going to do the primer. Everybody pretty much knows how to do a primer. I'm trying to sorry, I'm trying to get the f camera to focus. Everybody knows how to do a primer. Uh, everybody knows how to drop your powder. So I'm not going to do anything with that. So the next thing that you have to deal with is seating your bullets. Now the problem that I ran into is whenever I was seating my bullets, all of these I use the Hornaday XTPs, 124 grain. And that's probably one of the most common that people reload because they're very, uh, they're available about everywhere. They're inexpensive and they actually hit pretty good. But the problem is, is that it won't go down in the case mouth. It just barely sits on the edge. And so because of this, this case mouth is so short and this brass is not exactly thick, it's pretty thin. Uh, whenever I go to size these or seat these bullets, I, I was crushing my cases and I wasn't even realizing it because just the friction of uh seating a bullet doesn't feel much different from crushing the case and i was losing 25 percent of my cases so i uh, did a little bit of research and i got a universal uh case expanding die from lee it's the only reason i it's the only thing i use this for uh you set it up different ways you got four little things inside you can stack differently and um Essentially, it's going to flare out your case for you, and you should be able to see that pretty easily. Right now, the case the case wall is about as straight as it. There we go. It's relatively straight uh, at the case mouth. It actually measures at the case mouth. I'm measuring on the outside um, 376, 375. So I'm gonna flare my case mouth out. I was 375. Now I am about 382. And what I've done here is it's going to be hard to tell on the camera, but I've fish mouth or, or flared the case mouth a little bit. And so now the bullet will actually barely sit in there. And that means it'll help it go straight in. So after I have flared my case mouth, I'm going to remove my universal expanding tool and I am going to get my bullet seating, bullet seating die locked into place. Like I said, I don't have to adjust. You guys have to adjust yours unless you use these little lock and loads. So now if I've already, already primed my case, dropped my powder, I can balance the bullet right inside the case mouth and seat it. And with the XTP, it seats right to the edge of the cantaloupe. I mean, just right on it. Uh, your case, uh, maximum case length is uh, 1140. And it should come out to 1140. And it is 1141, so I'd have to uh, fix my, adjust it again, I guess, maybe. Uh, so I'm a thousandths over. Probably not a big deal, but anyway. Um, now the problem is, is my case mouth has been flared and the bullet is, uh, obviously I can probably push it in with my finger. Uh, that's a semi-automatic. Everyone for the most part knows that you're, um, uh, any kind of semi-automatic or tube fed or anything like that. You need to crimp these things. Um, they will set back and cause you some problems. So I bought a Lee Colette, um, 350 is a 357 SIG specific crimp tool. Uh, it's cheap. I think I'll pay 20 bucks for this thing. Um, now what I do is I drop it in there with my new bullet and I do one crimp. You get a little cam over action and I rotate the bullet just a little bit because it's got a colette in there that brings four little leaves together. And so what that ends up with, it gives you these little four little grooves and little, in, uh, say 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. So I rotate it about an eighth of a turn, and I send it in there again. And what that does is that takes those little, those little four little ear marks at uh, uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9, and it uh, flattens them out so you're less likely to have any kind of a feeding issue or anything like that. And there is how I do my 357 SIG. And no lubrication needed, no wiping them off, no cleaning them off, none of that mess. And it's in there, it's in there good, and all you have to do um now one thing I'll chunk this because it's, it's dead round 
the one thing that I keep hearing all the time, and mm, people keep thinking that you can take a 40 caliber. Here's a fired 40 cal, and they say that you can make a 357 SIG out of it. And I'll prove right now that you technically cannot. Will it shoot? Yeah. Is your case going to absolute spike due to excessive head spike? Yeah, it will. So I'm going to take my 40 caliber sizing die. I'm going to go ahead and size the 40 down so I can uh, feed it through my 357 SIG. So let me uh, set this up real quick. So I'm going to size my 40 down with a carbide die. All right, now I'm going to take my 357 SIG cedar die, and I'm going to take this 40 caliber case. Ah, stupid camera. I'm going to take this 40 caliber case, and I'm going to set it through there, and I'm going to neck this thing down. I'm going to, I'm going to reform this 40 caliber brass. All right, so it's been sized down to 40, so it'll go through here, not no problem. Once again. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it and give it another push just to make sure it's good and smooth. And now I've taken a 40 caliber brass and I've turned it into a 357 SIG. And when you put it beside one, I'd be daggone if you can't tell the difference. Physically, in your fingers, it feels just the same. But this is a 40 caliber I just, just resized to 357 SIG. Now, the case trim length is 860. Your maximum case length is 865 so you need to trim no more than 860 and I'm sitting here on 850 that's a once fired 40 and I'm 10,000 shy on my OAL will this fire in a 357 SIG yeah probably will uh, where did it rob you of your sizing you know your case body and shoulders are going to be the same it's going to rob you right here on the end from the from the bottom of the of the uh from the bottom of the uh shoulder forward to the case mouth now would i fire this yeah i don't know i don't know if i would i don't it's not worth it um some people do, some people don't, but there's a reason that they uh, they size these things off 10 millimeters. Um, but that's going to that's going to give you uh, an excessive headspace in the throat of the barrel. Uh, in the long run, you do potentially run the risk of damaging your chamber and your firearm. Uh, now I'm shooting a 357 Sig Legion 229. That's a MSRP of $1,400 handgun. Um, no, I didn't pay that for it, but still, I'm not going to risk a you know, thirteen, twelve hundred to fourteen hundred dollar handgun, much less any kind of. Uh, it's probably not going to explode. I don't foresee that, but I do foresee you causing some damage to your chamber. Um, it's not worth it. You can find three fifty seven sig brass all over the line. You can get it from Starline. You can get it. Uh, I, I find it Bass Pro and Cabela's all the time. I just bought I don't know like three or four bags of sig brass. Um, it wasn't even that expensive. Uh, pick it up at the range here and there, and I don't really plink with my 357 SIG, so I don't uh, I don't really worry about it. That's what my nine millimeters are for. Uh, this right here, I just like to go out and shoot once in a blue moon. This is my go-to gun if all hell breaks loose. Um, well, that's my go-to handgun if all hell breaks loose. But this right here is a reason that you shouldn't, couldn't, technically can't uh, form a 357 SIG out of a 40. It is too short. Now, if you want to reform a 10 millimeter, you can trim it down, size it, and make a 10 millimeter 357 SIG and keep within the specs of the brass. Um, but uh, 40, no, you're too short. Uh, anyway, so that is how I do my 357 SIGs, and I don't have to lube them. Now, I, I don't, I, if the 357 SIG carbide die would come down in price, I'd go ahead and buy one. But right now, I just it, all it costs me is uh, one extra stroke on the um on the uh on the, with the 40 seating uh i'm sorry the 40 sizer die um and i add the extra stroke for the uh case the flare of the case mouth and that's that's not technically necessary and it's not in the book but i got tired of crushing my cases and uh while i've had a lot of luck in recent years finding 357 sig brass um I uh, and I've got a good stockpile of it at the time because I mean I was reloading 357 SIGs back before it was cool. Um, I mean I've had a 357 SIG for pushing 20 years now I guess. Wow I'm getting old. 
so I was reloading, you know, you know, 15, 18 years ago. So, uh, and this was, this was the setup that I use and I've been using it this way. And I think I've got around five, 6,000 rounds that I've probably loaded and shot it through my gun. And I don't even, God knows how much I've got loaded and set ready to go. Uh, and I've never had a single failure. I think maybe twice I've had a, a primer failure, but out of 5,000 rounds, you know, that's not horrible. Um, but anyway, that's that's how I do my 357 SIGs, and I'm going to post this on my Facebook uh, on the Facebook group. So uh, anybody that's got any questions, that can hopefully hopefully this will help them. Um, anyway, other than that, uh, if you have any questions, just put you put a, put a comment down there below um, and let me know what you what you think. I'm going to recap here real quick. Um, 40 caliber uh, Lee 40 caliber die without the expander plug. And I size the body of the brass down. So this will go into the 357 SIG die without basically almost not even touching it. Um, I put in my 357 SIG die and I go ahead and bump my shoulder back properly and take care of my case mouth. And then once I take care of that, I put in a Lee Universal case expanding die. And you gotta play around with the plugs in this thing to get the to get it to flare right. There's like four plugs that are four conical shaped plugs and you turn them around and stack them it gives you an idea right here um i'm sorry there's two uh depending if you turn them up down face back to back top to top or none at all so this is kind of how mine i don't remember how mine's set up i just had to play around with it till i got it just right um if i'm not mistaken i think i got it set up for sl uh one on the far left Anyway, that's what I used to flare out my case mouth, and I flare out just enough to see to set the bullet where it won't sit on the top of the rim or barely in the edge of the rim. Um, if you shoot by chance one of these special 357 Sig bullets that are kind of boat tailed a little bit, uh, you you won't have to do that. But I shoot these XTPs, and they have a, they're a very flat base, and uh, that's the problem. So. Um, I would like to order and shoot different bullets where I wouldn't have to flare the case mouth because I don't want to overwork my brass and start cracking. I haven't had one crack yet, but uh, I can get the 9mm XTPs at any the four or five stores right here in town for, I don't know, anywhere between 9 to 15 bucks. Uh, so they're, they're cheap and they're hollow points. Good price on 357 stick hollow points, see what you think. But anyway, I flare it with the Universal Lee uh, flare die. Uh, I don't know if it has a part number on there or not. Uh, it bought me a 90798. 90798 Universal Case Expanding Die. Um, I set that up and I flare it just enough to get my bullet seated in. And then I go back to my RCBS Cedar Die. And I seat my um, bullets to length. And I bought a Lee uh, 357 SIG uh, Factory Crimp Die. Um, I don't see a part number on this, but I'm fairly certain it'll be relatively easy to find. Like I said, I think I found this thing on eBay, brand new for either 15 or 20 bucks. Um, you have to crimp the 357 SIG bullets. Uh, it barely hangs on to the edge. You do not have a tremendous amount of wall holding on to it. So um, once you crimp the uh, crimp that in, turn it, crimp it again. Uh, so you get an extra good, nice crimp on it, and you won't have those little uh, grooves at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And that is it. Like I said, I've got 5,000 give or take rounds through three different 357 SIGs. I've done the same process for at least 18 years, and I've had absolutely zero failures. It's not that, uh, it's not that hard to do, and it saves you a ton of money because these bullets are still technically expensive. Uh, not as expensive as it used to be, but they are still expensive. Again, I hope this helps. And I hate I did a 24-minute video. I apologize. Um, so anyway, give me have any questions, feel free to put it down there at the bottom. Thank you.